the product feed is the entire foundation of your success with Google Ads. And in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly how the feed works in 2025 and tips, tricks, and strategies on making your feed as good as possible so you can scale to the next level with Google Ads. But before we actually uncover the feed, let's first understand how it actually works. Now, when I refer to the feed, most viewers or most clients I work with always ask me the question, Shri, what does the feed actually even mean? And a feed actually is made up of multiple different parts. Essentially, a product feed is made up of the product itself that you're selling, the product title, the product images, followed by the description, and of course, any sorts of attributes and information related to the attributes you end up adding in the back end. Collectively, all of these things make up the product feed. And this product feed is essentially stored within your Google Merchant Center account. And this is where majority of your focus for optimizations is because this product feed is also what gets submitted onto the Google Shopping ad side of things and what the users see when they're clicking on the ads themselves, which means it's super crucial for us to be focusing on these feeds. Now, why is this the most important part of Google Ads? I'm gonna compare this to Meta Ads and Facebook Ads. Essentially, with Facebook ads, you have the ability to do something called interest targeting, where within the interest section, when you're creating the actual campaign, the ad sets, you have the ability to choose an interest. And this interest signals to the Facebook ads algorithm exactly who is your perfect customer and who you want your ads to show up in front of. Unfortunately, with Google Ads, we don't have the ability to do interest targeting. There's no such setting and there's no such option on a fundamental level. This means the product feed that we put so much time, effort and energy into that acts essentially as our interest targeting. And that tells the Google Ads algorithm exactly the right kind of person who would be interacting with your ad based on the keywords you have added in, based on the product images, based on expected CTRs and what kind of people usually interact with this type of image or this type of product so on and so forth so this is the main reason why the product feed influences your google ads results so much and it's the core of your google ad strategy because it's like running facebook ads campaigns and ad sets with no interest targeting yes it can work but more often than not in the beginning initially when the ad account has little to no data on your perfect customer it's going to take a very long time for things to actually start working for things to actually start scaling but with that the first kind of major tip and trick that i would recommend is to optimize the attributes that actually add within the Google Merchant Center for your products based on actual search results. So for instance, if we go onto Google and we do a quick search for the keyword 3D printer, what most users will do is they'll look at these ads, they'll look at their competitors, understand what their competitors have added in terms of specifications within titles, the description, so on and so forth, and they'll either copy them or they'll try to do one over them and they'll try to make theirs better. But what they fail to realize is they're not abiding by Google's algorithm and what it actually wants to see. The easiest way to know what your title should include, the easiest way to improve your Google Merchant Center product attributes is to look at the left-hand side and take a look at everything that's included within these listings on the left-hand side because these sub-menus right here, they literally tell you what Google is looking for, what kind of attributes, specific stores that are selling it, specific features, colors, number of extruders, the brand, so on and so forth. It's literally all of the necessary information, which not only should your products have in the back end, but also your product titles and descriptions should in generally include, because that's the best way for Google to directly read through and crawl through your website, your product pages and the feed, and then understand right away who your perfect customers. I mean, that's one of the easiest things you can do, and it helps you skip so much of the guesswork. This is something most brands don't even know about, and I truly believe that's the first thing any brand, regardless of the niche or industry you're in, should do. I mean, that's the first thing we do for the brands we work with under my agency as well. But second tip when it comes to the Google Merchant Center and the product feed in general is to keep the store quality score high. Now, the store quality score, you can find it within your Google Merchant Center on the overviews page right over here under your business on Google. If you look right here, the store quality for this brand, which we are working with, it says the overall quality is it's a top quality store with the store ratings of 4.6 if we click view more it actually tells us exactly how the overall quality score 
is calculated, which is super crucial because Google's internal system is looking at this quality score to understand how your business ranks amongst others. And this means your business will now have better ad rankings. It will face lower CPCs. It will get higher quality audience members versus the lower quality ones for the same CPCs you're bidding for compared to your competitors. So all these benefits come about from Google and even things such as the top quality store badge and whatnot. So it's very beneficial to have a store quality score of grades or above. Ideally, you want to be aiming at exceptional and it literally tells you how to achieve these things such as the shipping experience. You want it to be between zero to nine days delivery time. You want the shipping cost to be between zero to twenty eight dollars. Ideally, you want the return window to be between zero to one hundred eighty days and you can be a little bit up and down in some of these situations. However, overall, as long as you're following by Google's policies, as long as you try to incorporate as many of these things as possible, Google is fairly lenient and you don't always have to have 100% score. As you can see, this is 87%. This is 2.2 seconds, 2.13, so on and so forth. It's not perfect, but it's more than enough to get them an exceptional score, which then helps us also rank higher with Google shopping results without having to pay a single dime more. In fact, we can actually reduce our ad spend and cost with this strategy. So overall, ideal approach and something we always strive for with the clients we work with under my agency, which by the way, if you run a brand doing $50,000 or more per month in revenue, we need some extra help scaling to the next level with Google ads. Go on to my website, yourmarketing.com and schedule a completely free call with me and let's see how we can potentially work together and make that happen. But third major kind of tip here is you want to add as many attributes as possible. The one thing most brand owners don't realize is that not having certain things within their product attributes where it shows up as warning signs right here where it says what to do next and you can check this on your own Google Merchant Center to see if you have any warnings. But basically, the more warnings you have, the more red flags you're giving to Google and the more you're telling Google that, hey, my brand does not deserve to get the highest quality traffic or it does not deserve to rank high because we are not following by the directions. We're not really going above and beyond with our effort. And that's an immediate red flag. That's something you don't want to be doing. So you want to avoid having too many warning signs. Now, it's completely understandable if you have some warnings like GTIN missing or some other other information that you just can't provide missing, that's completely fine. But if you can provide it and it's missing, then that's not acceptable. And it's going to really cause the merchant center and the algorithm itself to look at you in a negative way, which is something that you should absolutely don't want. But fourth major tip for Google Merchant Center and the feed in general is you want to be A-B testing products with supplemental feeds. Now, a supplemental feed is essentially a second portion, a copy of your main product feed, which you can directly come in here and you can implement a supplemental feed. There's directions on Google, which you can also follow to create a supplemental feed. But essentially it works in conjunction to your main product feed, which is basically connected to your Google Merchant Center without having any sort of of overlap without really adding any sorts of unnecessary problems to your overall feed. And this is ideal because what this does is it allows you to now start A-B testing things such as product titles, product images, even the description. You can now A-B test, add in certain attributes, change things, so on and so forth as needed. And this is beautiful because now you don't have to really risk getting your merchant center suspended for having duplicated products, which oftentimes can be a situation, especially if you don't change the SKUs and the item IDs of your duplicated products. So supplemental feed is used to basically A-B test at scale. You don't need to be creating supplemental feeds for 5, 10, 20 products, but if you have 50 and above, I highly recommend you look into creating supplemental mental feeds to now A-B test different titles, images, so on and so forth, because that's the only way you're going to know if one product title or image works better versus the other. And the benefit is you would rather have your ad showing up multiple times within these top five placements. For instance, if, for example, if you were selling 3D printer, the number two ad should be yours. The number four ad should be yours. The number five ad should be yours. And that allows you to now take up more impression share and more just room within the listings and the overall auction, which allows you now to get more people on your website and potentially more sales. So overall, it's very beneficial to be testing with supplemental fees. But finally, major tip that I would recommend for everybody to implement is to automate feed hygiene. Now, when I say feed hygiene, I'm talking about basically setting in automated rules within your product feed, which you can, by the way, do directly within the Google Merchant Center with a quick Google search. You'll find out how to do this exactly. But doing such as auto removing low inventory SKUs or doing such as flagging missing GTIN issues or disapproved items to a Slack channel or to another kind of communication channel you use. So your team members directly know when something's missing, where something's disapproved, so on and so forth. So you don't wait around looking at your email 
emails 24 7. another thing you can do is you can also use automated rules to do simple things to just capitalize all first letters of your titles or remove generic filler terms such as buy now or for sale or best things like those you can do so many different things with automation rules and this is ideal because what you want to understand is a clean feed equals fewer disapprovals and better quality scores which thus is going to lead to lower cpc so automated rules especially for the most generic things are absolutely crucial if you want a strong feed in 2025 but if you run a brand doing 50,000 or more per month in revenue you need some extra help scaling to the next level with google go to my website theormarketing.com and schedule a completely free call with me and let's see how we can potentially work together and make that happen